What's poppin' YouTube? Andrew here from Thousand Dollar Car Guy. So we're gonna continue working on the Echo, of course, because we still have it. Uh, if I look all sweaty and disgusting, it's just because I got done making a previous episode of Do Something Every Day 2. Today, I'm going to continue the adventures of the Echo. But let me show you something we've been working on off camera. If you notice, this back window looks a heck of a lot better than it used to. It's still disgusting, but that's because it had old grimy tint on it. Now that old grimy tint was really well stuck on. And if you want to know how to remove the majority of it, look up the trash bag method. That's what we did. And, well actually I can show you. Let me put this down. We're gonna need that in a little bit. Here's the old tint that came off. This came off in one giant sheet thanks to the trash bag method. Otherwise it comes off in little tiny shards. Look, you can still see the old Salt Life logo stuck in there. So, let's get rid of that once and for all. Anywho, so this little gizmo, this is the Scan Gauge 2. And I bought it so that hopefully my wife would get better fuel economy because she'd be able to see it live tracking on here. Uh, although my dreams never really panned out like I thought they would. The other thing it does is it can check anything that's OBD2. So since I have the check engine light still on in the Echo, uh, I think it was only off because we reset the ECU. So we're going to try and plug this thing in and see why we have a check engine light. So the first thing you're going to want to do is locate your OBD2 port, which happens to be right up here underneath the hood latch release. Let me show you. As we dive deep down underneath the car. There you go, right there. Right next to the hood latch release. Next we're gonna plug it in. Make sure you've got it facing in the right direction. Okay, now we have it successfully plugged in. So what I'm going to do is start the car up. And there we go, connecting. We can tell already we have the check engine light going on in the upper right hand corner there. So let's run the scan on this. So all you have to do is hit the scan button. Six stored codes. Oh boy. We'll check the codes. We've got P0303, P0304, P0440, 000000. We can go through the previous ones, but that seems to be it. Another advantage of this is that you can clear the codes. So you say yes. All the codes are cleared. We should return. Now when we do the scan, no codes found, not ready. And you can go up there and see that the check engine light is no longer on. Now, the only reason I did that is because we are immediately going to go look up what all those codes do. Uh, you can also set this up to do a lot of other things. You could do trips and mile per gallons and all sorts of useful things. I highly recommend Scan Gauge if you just need a simple tool to check codes and want to learn a lot more about your car. Uh, I think it will be able to tell me something like temperature going on in this car, which is a big deal because although that light may be blue right now, it won't be for long. Currently my cooling fan for the radiator isn't turning on. And I'm not sure why, but I think we're gonna have to figure it out very soon. So let's head inside and see what those codes mean. Happy Easter. It's a couple days later than you saw that last part of the video. So I was online checking out what those codes mean and here's what I found. P0303 is a cylinder three misfire, just like 304 is a cylinder four misfire. And then 404 is exhaust gas recirculation. So I'm assuming that the simplest thing would be the spark plugs on three and four are bad, but there's no point in just replacing two plugs. We might as well go with all four. But I imagine that unburnt fuel is making its way down the line and telling it to throw the, uh, the EVAP codes later on because it's saying that unburnt fuel is making its way through the system and it shouldn't. There's also a chance that it could be faulty uh, plug wires. It could be the injector, it could be the poor electrical circuit, but my guess is it's just gonna be this part plugs. No joke, it's like legit two weeks later since the last video clip you saw with me on the computer. I drove the car for a week solid hoping to trip the check engine lights again, but they haven't come on. I'm starting to think that it was probably just bad gas. The car had literally been sitting for months before I drove it home and I was still on the same tank of gas this whole time. 
So I'm thinking, maybe the problem just solved itself. But the problem we're focusing on now is actually that fan. So I almost had a nuclear meltdown on my way to work one of the days because I got stuck in traffic. I ended up popping off one of the coolant lines. Um, essentially, the fan wasn't kicking on and all of my coolant had left the radiator. So that's a real big bummer. So we're going to try and work on that today. And I am by no means an electrical master. I once pulled out an engine harness and rewired it and it did work eventually, but it took a while. The whole circuitry thing, grounds and fuses and relays, I'm not that great at that. It's gonna be a lot of learning for me on this process. So as you can see, I'm like almost out of gas now. I've driven 145 miles since I decided to try and re-trip the ECU check engine light. So uh, as you can see, no check engine light is uh, going on up there. So yeah, let's try and figure out what's going on with the fans. After probably 20 minutes of looking around the engine bay, trying to figure out what I'm doing, I realized that the switch for the AC system also can override the need for the fan to come on on the radiator. So what I did was I pulled off the connector and I jumpered between the two pins and now my AC doesn't even try to kick on, so I probably wouldn't advise this. But now, when I start the car, so I'm gonna go ahead and tidy this up with a little bit of electrical tape to make sure that my, uh, my rigged connection doesn't actually come undone. Turns out I don't have any electrical tape, so I'm gonna have to go to my dad's house and get some. Well, let me show you my terrible handiwork. Mmm, nice. Anyway, at least now it works. So you're probably wondering why the sudden change in quality and work. Well, that's because we have some bigger plans for the channel, and specifically the Miata, but I'm not gonna tell you everything that's going on just yet. For the Miata project to happen, I need to make the Echo my daily driver. To make the Echo my daily driver, I need to still fix three things. I wanna put a new regulator in the window so I can put the window up and down. I want to get a new head unit for the car, and I need to fix the compressor for the AC, which I probably just blew out a fuse or a relay because now it doesn't work like it used to. There are huge things coming for the Miata and I can't wait to show you, but it's not ready yet. So thanks very much for watching. Please look forward to any future episodes I'm gonna have planned. We have a few more things to button up on the Echo, but then we're off to the next really big project and I think you're gonna love it. Okay, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy.